Hey FRT community, back with you for part two of our oxygenation series related to the effectiveness and the, the smart use of PEEP, okay? I um, want you to understand in part one we talked about how all oxygenation status are not equal. So we went through this scenario right here. We had a PaO2 of 80 and a PaO2 of 80, yet we had an FiO2 of 80 and an FiO2 of 40. And we talked through and talked about how PF ratio will be different, how A to A difference will be different. And we showed you that patient number two is much more effective in using the smaller amount of oxygen they have to achieve an acceptable level of oxygenation. And that's what's important to understand, okay? Now the reason at the end of that video we talked about is obviously because of the peak difference. This video hopes to break down for you the gas laws surrounding FiO2 and the gas laws surrounding PEEP to make it make sense why PEEP is a valuable tool that you should use and not be afraid of, okay? So let's jump into it. I'm going to get rid of all of this because you've already seen this in the first part of the series. If you haven't seen part one, I'm going to link to it. I think it'll come up right above my head and you will see that link. I encourage you to watch that one so you know where we've come from, so you know what the purpose of this video is for, okay? So I'm going to erase all of this because we don't really need this anymore because we're really getting into more theory-based stuff now, not specific examples, okay? So what I wanna to talk to you about today is two things, and that is I wanna bring back Dalton's Law, which we touched on in the first video, and I wanna talk about Fix Law, okay? These are the two things. Now, when we talk about Dalton's Law, we're talking about FiO2. When we talk about fixed law, we're talking about PEEP. So I want to show you how this stuff works, okay? If you have an atelectatic alveoli um, versus a normal healthy alveoli, then this is what happens. You put in an increased amount of FiO2 into here, into this healthy alveoli, then you will have an increased amount of PaO2. Now, in a healthy lung, this increased PaO2 equates to an increased P little aO2. Okay? That should make sense. Kind of touched on this last video. Remember I told you in the last video, increase FiO2 equals increased P little aO2. Everybody knows that. But you, as respiratory therapists know, that the reason FiO2 increase in FiO2 increases PLO2 is because this middle piece of the puzzle happens. We increase alveolar partial pressure of oxygen. This is Dalton's law. This is exactly what it says. If you increase the partial pressure across the semi-permeable membrane, then you will increase the amount of gas diffusion. And this is how it normally works. And this makes sense. But let's look at our atelectatic alveoli. When you look here, you can increase the FiO2. The problem is, is that there is no ventilation happening in this region. So your PaO2, your P big AO2 here is nothing, which means this blood coming back from the venous system will cross through and not pick up any oxygen, okay? We call this, when this happens, we call this venous admixture, okay? This venous blood that comes back and passes through this atelectatic region, even though you increase the FiO2, you still have done nothing to this atelectatic area the PVO2 will come through, no oxygen is picked up, so you have venous admixture mixing with this PaO2 over here, as it all dumps back into the left atrium, okay? So you gotta understand that right there. This is what we call refractory hypoxemia. 
Refractory hypoxemia is defined by an increase in FiO2 that results in a minimal increase in arterial oxygenation. What it means is, is you can turn FiO2 up as high as you want to, but the patient's not going to respond because there is a massive shunt present. So refractory hypoxemia happens in the presence of a shunt. Shunt equals PVO2 passing by alveoli that are not participating with gas exchange. Perfusion is greater than ventilation and it leads to venous admixture and all that leads to hypoxemia. So you see here, well, Dalton's law in this scenario will not fix the situation, okay? Well, we have to switch to, and our mind has to switch to this. First of all, we have to recognize refractory hypoxemia, and you have to recognize when a shunt is present for your patient or, or with your patient. And then you have to make the appropriate adjustments in the ways you can affect oxygenation. Now, obviously, the first and easiest way is increase FIL2. But as I just illustrated, that's not going to help in this case. So we need to go to plan B, which is implement PEEP. Now PEEP operates off of Fick's law, and PEEP looks like this. I'm going to get rid of this. So PEEP, you have this area of atelectasis here that's causing a shunt. And is leading to refractory hypoxemia. PEEP says that when you increase PEEP, what you will do is you will take this alveoli that's atelectatic and you will increase the surface area of it and also decrease the thickness of the AC membrane of the alveolar capillary membrane. Okay? So increase surface area. You can see here to where this atelectatic alveoli has very little surface area. When we add PEEP, obviously we've increased the surface area. Increasing the surface area equals increased diffusion. Point number one, more surface area equals to more gas exchange across the barrier. Point number two is decreased AC membrane thickness. This will also equal increased diffusion. So if you have atelectasis or if you have, let's say, not atelectasis, let's say you have an alveola that looks like this, okay? And it's filled with consolidation or fluid then obviously the gas that's coming in here, your FiO2 that's coming in, cannot get through the thickness of the AC membrane. It can't go from alveolar to capillary because of all of this fluid. So what do we do? We increase, with PEEP, we increase the surface area and what that will do is it will take the, the alveolar capillary membrane and make it thinner. So this compared to this, and we still have a problem here, right? This is still all consolidation and fluid. But with PEEP, we've made the surface, I mean the thickness of this much smaller, which is going to also lead to a greater level of diffusion, okay? And that's my point with this second part. It's not just knowing, okay, well, we need to increase PEEP. Why do you want to increase PEEP? And the answer is this. Because a fixed law, PEEP will result in an increased surface area and a decreased AC membrane thickness, which will result in a greater level, level of gas diffusion in the presence of a condition that is causing a shunt. Go back to video one. 40% with a PEEP of 12 resulted in an arterial oxygenation of 80. 80% 80 with a PEEP of five resulted in an arterial oxygenation of 80. The PEEP was the difference because of surface area 
and because of AC membrane thickness. Okay, now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did so, please like, subscribe if you found it valuable, and look for part three, because in part three, I hope I've sold you on the value of PEEP. In part three, we're gonna talk about how to recognize when PEEP is causing a problem, because there is a point to where PEEP becomes detrimental to your patient. That's in part three. Best wishes, guys.